Hello everyone. In this lecture, I'm going to give you a overview of what's inside a router. We're going to give a sneak, get a sneak peek into how to, how a router works. So this picture here shows a schematic of how of what is inside a router. There are the router's input ports through which datagrams come in. Then this is the routing processor and the high-speed switching fabric. And then the datagrams exit the our router to the router's output ports. So router has two key functions. One is routing and forwarding. Routing is mainly determining the path between a source and a destination. And there are many routing algorithms like RIP, OSPF, BGP. We'll be getting a flavor of routing algorithms when we talk about Dijkstra's and Bellman Ford's algorithms later in this class. The other key function of a router is forwarding. It's actually taking a datagram from the input port of the router and, di and directing it to the, to the appropriate output port. And that is done with the help of this, this switching fabric. So the routing and the forwarding are, are, are separated by this, have this logical separation. Routing is done actually in software, which is the process of, and routing is a process of finding a path between a source and a destination. The data per forwarding is actually implemented in hardware and it comprises of forwarding data from the out, from the router's input port to the appropriate output port. And the high-speed switching fabric helps in <coughs> helps in this data forwarding. Before we move on, I want to uh, point one more thing. The route processor, what it does the, is computes the routes and from there uh, updates the forwarding tables, which tells the <coughs> which tells the high-speed switching fabric how to forward a packet from the router's input port to the router's output port. So this is the high-level overview and now we will discuss each of these sections in greater detail. Like we'll first look at the router's input ports, then we'll talk about the switching fabric, and then we'll talk about the router's output port. During this discussion, you will also have an understanding of how queues build up within a router, and you will know how datagrams can get lost and congestion can take place. So <clears throat> in a, for the, the input ports functions are the following. First, there is a line termination where the actual bits are received. So it's it's implemented in physical layer. Then there is the link layer protocol and we'll talk about link layer protocols in, <clears throat> in chapter 5 where they actually receive a link layer frame. And then there is a lookup and forwarding to determine where this particular datagram has to be forwarded. Now this lookup and, and forwarding is where <clears throat> queuing delays can occur. So, so packets or datagrams are continuously being received and the line and then they have to be looked up uh, and uh, looked up to determine which a router's output port they have to be directed to and hence they can hence they have they while this lookup and, and forwarding is taking place datagrams can queue up so the goal here is to compute to complete the input ports processing at line speed so if the if datagrams are are, are coming in constantly at line speed and the and the forwarding is slower than the line speed, queues are going to build up. That is, the datagrams are <clears throat> going to be queued up here, and if the queue fills up, datagrams are going to be lost. So this is a very important concept uh, that we will learn in case of a router, that queuing, there is queuing queues that can build up at the input port of a router. Similarly, that can there are, we will see that there are also queues that can build up an output port of the router, and due to this queuing, Delays can occur and also packets can be lost. Now, once <clears throat> the uh, the for the lookup has been done and the corresponding output port has been determined, the the packet has to be transferred from the output port to the uh, input port to the corresponding output port. This act of actually transmitting the uh, of forwarding the packet from the input port to the corresponding output port is the goal of the switching fabric. So there are many types of switching fabric. One is a memory-based switching fabric, which was, <clears throat> which is, which is kind of predated and not used now. Then there is a bus switching fabric, and then there is this crossbar kind of switching fabric. So we'll take a brief look at each of these switching fabrics. In a memory-based switching fabric, it's what it's a first-generation routers. It's like traditional computers, which switching takes place directly under the under the control of the CPU. So packets can only be, uh, packets are copied at the 
the system to the system's memory and the speed is limited by the speed of the memory so it's limited by the memory's bandwidth which and which makes such routers pretty slow and hence they are the first generation of routers so if you can see they are just put onto the <coughs> wire goes onto the memory and from the memory uh, it can go to the output port so the next generation of routers have the switching fab switching done via a bus so the datagram from the our input port or the datagram from the input port to the output port takes place via a shared bus so there is the, as you can see here is a shared bus between the input and the output ports and the datagrams are are sent from the input port to the output port via this bus so once again the speed is now limited by the switching speed uh, is now limited by the bandwidth that's available for a bus as a some of the next generation of routers, <clears throat> the next generation of routers, switching takes place via an interconnection network. The interconnection networks can be of different types like banyan networks, crossbar networks, and there are many other forms of networks as well. These these kind of interconnection networks help switching to take place at all at line <coughs> really fast, and this is kind of the state of the art. Now, one, now that we've looked at the input ports and the switching fabric, the next thing that we have to look at is, look at is the output ports. The output ports, um, in the output ports, the, there is the, if you look at the, di at the schematic for the output port, you will see that just reversed uh, with respect to the input ports. First, there is this um, datagram buffer where queuing can take place. Then there is a link layer protocol and finally, and the, the packets are actually sent onto the wire. So, uh, when packets are being are, are being directed from the switch, switching port, switching fabric to the output port, they can get buffered in this datagram buffer. Now, depending on whether <coughs> the this uh, depending on the speed of the switching fabric, packets can uh, can get lost or get <coughs> packets can get lost at this datagram buffer, or queues can build up. So it, the, the speed of the switching fabric determines whether queues are going to get built up here. So if the switching fabric is really fast and, and it's faster than the, the speed at which, uh, at which packets are sent onto the line, then queues are going to build up and packets can be lost. And this datagram buffer also takes care of scheduling, which, de which is the process of determining I mean, how different packets are treated. So you could, if you if if you want to treat to have different priority on the different packets, you could have scheduling algorithms uh, run here, which determine how packets are going to be queued and how they are going to be served. One such example, as I just mentioned, is priority scheduling. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about output port port queuing. So the buffering. As I told you, when buffering is going to take place at the output port, when the arrival rate ex uh, where the switch exceeds the output line speed. So if there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> the packets from the switching fabric are being drained really fast, but the line speed is not that fast, packets are going to uh, build up. As a result, delays are going to occur. And if the arrival rate from the switch is really fast, packets can also be dropped at the output at the output queue, resulting in buffer overflow. On the other hand, at the input uh, queue, queues are going to uh, input port queues are going to build up if the switching fabric is slower than than line speed. If the switching fabric is slower than the line speed, packets are going to <coughs> come in and sit in the queue. And if the switching fabric cannot drain the packets really fast, queues are going to build up and loss can occur due to input uh, input buffer overflow. The kind of uh, blocking that's implemented is ahead of the line. By that, I mean that packets are served in the order that they arrive. That is the, the data queue, the datagram and the front of the queue is served first, followed by, by the datagrams that are, that, are, that are behind it. So this is all that I want to tell you about, about routers and how they work.